Well, hello, lovely listeners. Um, today, I'm talking to the wonderful Dr. Catherine Urram. And Catherine is a conventional doctor, but did further training to integrate more alternative and more holistic therapies into her practice. Catherine is trained in sacred healing modalities from all of, oh, sorry, from all over the world. Um, and it's her passion to help people awaken to their true calling and contribution. Yeah, in this new era of humanity. So I can definitely, definitely relate to that. <laughs> so welcome, Catherine. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on. Thank you so much, Mel, for having me today. You're very welcome. And Catherine, um, I'd love to hear more about your story. I'd love to hear how you got into being a doctor in the first place. Um, and, you know, did you have any specialities in that? And, and also, obviously, what has brought you across to the more holistic side of things? I know that you're Reiki healer as well, as, as, as am I, so, um, which is amazing. So, yeah, I'd love to hear more about your story. Well, Mel, so I'm a physician, and as you said, I'm a physician who started in conventional medicine, went to more alternative medicine and sacred healing practices. And now my whole focus is helping people connect with their hearts, with their deep calling so they can contribute to a peaceful and loving society, which we all know is so important right now. So the way this all started was I started in conventional medicine, went to regular medical school, regular training. I did emergency medicine, with an emphasis on intensive care. And along the way, I saw a lot of different incidents where I knew there was deeper healing going on. Right. And yeah, and these scenarios that I saw pointed to a deeper healing going on than what we would even think about in alternative medicine with herbs or supplements. There was a deep sacred healing going on. So, for example, there was one night when I was in the emergency department, it's very crowded, and a woman comes in um, in a lot of pain, she has a lot of different conditions, and her medications weren't working. And she had clearly been just processed through the system, and I'm sure some of the listeners here know what I'm talking about, it's just being processed through, you know, medications, diagnoses, and, um, and it really occurred to me that if we could just listen to this woman and hear what she has to say in her heart, that she could probably get better. We could just give some full listening to her. So that really raised my awareness to something deeper going on. And then what happened was I did um, an integrative medicine fellowship, which is where you learn how to combine natural medicine and um, conventional medicine. And I also learned these different sacred practices from around the world. And I had a private practice where I was helping people heal from these, from chronic conditions, um, from depression, fibromyalgia, autoimmune disorders. And over time, I noticed that people were connecting with something very deep and purposeful and spiritual when they were healing. And um, if you're listening to this and you've ever recovered for an illness, from an illness, um, you know that when you get to the other side, when you recover, you feel a sense of aliveness. And so when I saw that happening in people over and over again, that really sparked my interest. What is that? Catherine, you, you mentioned about this woman in uh, the emergency department. What do you mean when you say you saw something else going on? What, what did that look like or feel like? Sure, great question, Mel. So, so as Reiki people, we can, we can both understand this and I'm sure a lot of your listeners are Reiki attuned as well. There's a, a feeling, right, that you get when healing starts to happen. You can feel your heart open. You can feel that loving energy start to flow. And a lot of us get different images or sensations. And so when we're couple, when we couple this with our intellectual knowledge about what's happening in a situation, sometimes we get these, you know, moments of inspiration that are just clear as day, uh, which I know you're tapping into with your clients, is those moments of inspiration that bring us out of this settled state and into an aliveness okay so were you already when you sensed that then were you already attuned to reiki yes so i did reiki before i went into conventional medicine ah. and 
Yeah, and I, you know, it, it pointed to something quite interesting to me. We think generally that there's conventional medicine and there's alternative medicine and the two don't mix. But one of the things that I've noticed through my practice is that there's one underlying healing energy that runs through everything. And if we can just connect with that, can expand our awareness and access healing. And um, as you know, and as a lot of us know, it originates inside of ourselves, inside of our hearts. So how long ago, so you did the Reiki first. So how, how young were you when you did the Reiki? And, and then when did you become a doctor? Right, so I did the Reiki um, after college. Um, and I had begun the search for different healing methods even before that. I had traveled around the world learning um, traditional healing practices in India, and some Thailand and some other places. So it was really a step al along the way. And um, the whole practice even started quite early. I was introduced to medicine um, by my family. Um, and so the whole thing is, is very deeply connected to my sense of purpose and, and my heart. When you say you were introduced to medicine by your family, which medicine do you mean? Conventional conventional medicine yeah oh. you know, have you got doctors in your family have you yeah you know I come from a lineage of physicians and surgeons and a lot of times in our culture we think of being a doctor as just another job um and we think of a lot of jobs like this but the reality is there is a deep healing tradition that runs through being a physician and the deep healing tradition is helping to alleviate suffering for people. And so I feel profoundly connected to that. And a lot of us are connected to deeper, richer traditions. And that is part of what I help people do is connect with the essence of their heart. And so that we can all become healers in whatever we're doing, not just you know, performing the tasks of our job, but really bringing that essence and that life to what we do. Okay, so if I've got this right, then you you were tuned to Reiki before you became a doctor, but you were from a, a you know lineage line of, of doctors. So was it always in your mind that you were going to be a doctor ever since a young girl? Or that is a good question. Somewhere, somewhere in there, but of course. You know, I, um, I just followed my interest and, and fulfilled what was being presented to me. So I'm grateful for the diversity of experiences I've had in working with people in different settings and be able to delve into what it is that's the deepest form of healing. Um, and if it's okay, Mel, can I bring us into some of this? Yeah, sure, yeah. Great. So... What we're going to do is we're going to connect with the essence of the heart. And so it's my experience, training, and understanding that all healing energy comes from within the heart. That's where our essence is. So we'll go in there. So if you're not driving and if you're somewhere comfortable, let's do this. So you can place your hands on your heart and close your eyes and put all of your awareness on your heart and breathe into this place and focus directly on the center of your heart and allow it to open. Just putting all of your awareness there. And the key here, while we keep breathing into the heart is to not think about the heart, but to feel it. Yes, put your thoughts there. Yes, put your mind there, but really feel the sensation there. You may experience a flowing or a gentleness, and you may be able to see a light coming through the center of your heart and just continually focusing on the center. You may see a dot or a circle, just focusing on the center of your heart, breathing in there, 
If you see that light there, just allowing it to expand and open and really connecting with this place. Now, this place that we're connecting with is a real piece of energy anatomy that's known across cultures. This is the wellspring of healing. This is the essence. This is the thread of universal energy that exists in all of us. And we can come here whenever we want. And the more we come here and the more we cultivate this, the more it runs through our lives in ways that we don't even have to direct moment to moment with our minds, but just naturally flows healing energy through us. And resting here, knowing that whenever we want, we can just place our hands on the heart and it can help cultivate this. And when you're ready, you can come back up and we'll keep talking. That was lovely, thank you. Thank you, Mel. Felt, I still feel it, a real warmth, you know, a real warmth across that. Me too. It's so, it's so beautiful. And, uh, you know, a lot of us might feel that warmth and um, a relaxation sensation in the body, a calming of the mind, a greater embodiment, and a greater feeling of love and compassion. Mm. So do you do that with all of your patients? Yes. So this, from my experience, is the basis of all healing work. And from here, we can do healing work in various forms, whether through talking, through deeper meditation, through deeper any energy work, but going through the heart is the gateway. So right now, um, in my work, what I'm doing is I'm just helping as many people connect with their hearts um, as deeply as possible. And so we do that through this meditation and um, I'll give you the link now. So if you're interested in this and this felt nice to you, um, you can access it and just keep, keep doing it. And that's the mainstay of my work now because it's, um, as you can tell, it's such a, a catch-all, it goes in so deeply to connect with your essence that what's occurring in um, your body, your mind, and your outer world can just correct itself a little more naturally without taking care of each individual thing, but a, a deeper course correction. So I'm still, I'm still intrigued and I'm still curious um, because I suppose my own um, perception, subjectivity, doesn't put a general physician with Reiki. The, the two always seem to be very different. You've got your Western medicine, you've got your Eastern medicine. Um, so are you still perform, are you still working as a, a general physician? I don't know what your speciality is. Did you say it was emergency work or? It was emergency, I was in emergency medicine and then I went into integrative medicine, which is the combination of natural and conventional medicine. So was that a thing in America then? Because I didn't know that was a thing. Okay. Yes, it's a it's a specialty, and um, it is a really great specialty because, as we know, so many of us are interested in alternative medicine, and we need safe and effective ways to combine those things. Um, I'm no longer seeing patients. I'm moving into this space of um, how can we connect deeply for um, a more peaceful collective future. So this is just the focus of what I'm doing right now. Um, so you're not working in general surgeries or, or hospitals anymore? No. You've got your own sort of clinic, if you like. Yes, yes. And right now, right now, the main thing that I'm doing is just helping to connect people with the heart through this meditation. Um, after, so to fill in the story for you, so after um, emergency, I did the integrative medicine fellowship, and then I had a practice like that for a while. And in that practice, I treated lots of different conditions with um, conventional and alternative medicine, looking at the medical, emotional, um, 
and spiritual aspects of what was going on with people. And then over time that moved more into a more spiritual based healing practice, helping people with self-discovery and, um, and spiritual growth and finding their purpose. And, and now it's transitioning to a more kind of collective, collective healing. And do you have um, particular people that you work with or is it just whoever seems to be attracted? Yeah, you know, that's a really good, that's a really good question. So over the years, I've noticed that there is a certain thread of people that, that comes in. And um, I'm sure a lot of the people that listen to your podcast are kind of in this thread of um, self-discovery, of, of inquiry and discovery and spiritual growth. And I noticed this when I had a medical practice too, is you know, people came in with their different medical conditions and people responded to different styles of treatment, right? So let's take depression, for example. I used to treat people with depression. Some people will come in, a, uh, a medication would be good for them. Some people needed something a little bit lighter, like a supplement or an herb. Some people, even something lighter, like an energy treatment or a homeopathic. So we all respond to different things. And it's my understanding and experience that that comes from our uh, orientation and consciousness or our level of consciousness. Um, of course, there are different severities of biological disease that need different styles of treatment. Um, but for a lot of things, we respond um, based on our kind of level of consciousness and, and what we're interested in um, for, for some issues. And so, um, you know, the same thing holds true when it comes to personal development and spiritual growth. We all have different orientations and um, levels of refinement, which we're interested in and which we respond to. Okay. So um, you mentioned obviously in your bio about this new era that we find ourselves in. I'd like to, I'd like to hear a little bit of your viewpoint on that. What does that feel like and look like to you? That's a very good question. So when we look at how we accumulate knowledge, one of the places that we accumulate knowledge from is our internal space. And this has become increasingly more important. As we know, our internal guidance is indispensable. And it's my experience that helping people discover their internal guidance is what helps bring people to greater wellness and sense of purpose. Now that internal guidance, um, as you know, Mel, is not entirely mental. And most of the time it's not, you know, that's part of you know, why we do Reiki. Like, when you start off a Reiki session, for example, you know, one of the things you ask is to allow your personality and ego to step to the side and allow the, the deeper Reiki energy to come through. And that, that energy is not mental. That energy is uh, spiritual. It's of essence. It comes from the heart. And so um, the more we can uncover that for ourselves individually, the more we have an opportunity to experience that wholeness um, as individuals and then come together collectively. And so thinking about this new era that we're in, it's that ability to listen to ourselves, that responsibility for our own individual healing that we can contribute to a, uh, a peaceful collective for a brighter future. We have you know, the ability as human beings to choose what, what road we're gonna go down, what our future is gonna look like for our species and for the planet. And, um, you know, it starts off with that personal um, connection to that source within so we can come together and fulfill a greater purpose. And are you seeing, I mean, I'm fresh from a, a conversation with a very dear friend yesterday who's been really suffering, um, probably getting on for a year. Um, well, in fact, I've got two very close friends that are, are pretty much in the same boat. Um, and I mean, you know, serious mental health problems right now. And to me, it feels like, you know, this 
pandemic that we've found ourselves in is creating more mental health problems than actual viral problems. Um, you know, say my partner is has suffered with anxiety and stress over the last year or so, on and off. My son has been suffering with anxiety. Um, I know of people that have started to get to a point where they can't even go out the door. They're feeling, you know, like overwhelmed. Um, have you seen that sort of thing with the people that you're um, treating? Absolutely. So that a lot of us had that opportunity in the pandemic when we were in the quarantine. Um, a lot of people had a lot of time um, at home, a lot of opportunity to delve into that deeper development. So I did see a lot of that and a lot of um, a lot of deep growth that's still going on. It's still a wave that's yeah. happening. You know, a lot of people are suffering, like you said. And, um, at the same time, there's a lot of opportunity for, for growth in there. And, and are you finding that what you're able to offer those people is enough? You know, in, you know I, gave, I gave my friend yesterday a Reiki session and she was like, when I first got there, she couldn't stop crying. And um, the, the sheer sadness was just coming out of her and it was painful to watch. Um, and I asked her if she wanted some Reiki and she said she did. And, and after the session, she felt, she said, and she, by the way, she's a declared atheist. And me and her have had many debates over the years about my, you know, my spirituality and she's just not like that at all. Um, however, over the last few weeks, that seems to have started to creep in for her and she's starting to understand it more. And at the end of it, she was like, wow, that has actually made me feel better. And I said, well, it will, you know, it will. It's a nice, gentle healing. It's there to calm the system and, and help. Um, but she was quite gobsmacked, I think, that it actually helped. But it was great because I saw her again. Like when I first got there, it wasn't her, you know, dead behind the eyes almost. Um, and then I saw glimpses of her again. Now, I know she's on a long road and I know one session of Reiki is not going to change her world. But um, I guess my question is, <clears throat> with the severity of some people's mental states, what, what would you be offering to those? Or is that a case of there's conventional and holistic still? Or how would you approach it? Right. So there's a, a lot in, in what you were just describing um, with your friend. So first of all, one of the things about healing that we know is that oftentimes healing does not come from the cognitive mind. Yes, like conventional therapies, you need to, you need to think and you need to work through um, intellectual knowledge but when it comes to the deeper process of healing with energy and spirit, it's, um, it's not a cognitive process. If we knew what was going to heal us, we'd be healed a lot of times. I had a, a, um, a technique I was using in my practice for a while um, where I would, uh, people would come, come, come in um, and lie on the treatment table and we would do a, a healing session and we would get um, into these really healing states. So, you know, if you're receiving energy work like Reiki, one of the things that happens is your, your heart rate slows down, your blood pressures decreases, your mind clears. Um, sometimes we can get into um, heart coherence as well. And it's just this really soothing state for the body and the mind. And I found that when I would bring people into this state, I could ask them what they needed to help them heal. And so often people could tell me just what they needed. It was as if, if we reduced the fuzz in what was going on, that this deeper clarity could come through. And I saw really clearly that's how innate wisdom really works. Mm -hmm. And so to answer your question, everybody's situation is different in, in what they need. And 
everyone, um, everyone has different individual factors. Um, but what I can tell you is that there's a deep knowing that we can connect with and then a deep essence. And if we start looking to that a little bit more, we can alleviate some of our reliance on outside healers and substances, you know, medications, diets, programs, because a lot of this is just pointing to something deeper in ourselves. Now, I'm not taking away from the necessity for medical treatment at times, but what I am saying is that when we're looking for things to feel better, um, we're often looking for something to fix what's wrong with us. And a lot of times there's not anything actually wrong with us. <laughs> um, so we need to find what's right about ourselves and only we can do that. You, you can't pay someone or buy something to show that to you. You just need to discover that for yourself. And that's part of why I love bringing people into the heart state um, through this meditation in, in various forms because um, over time that really cultivates and that naturalness of what is right about ourselves, that essence of ourselves, our position within the universe, that becomes very clear to us. And that's really the process of healing is realizing our position in the universe. And um, when we see how that's inherently right and that's inherently perfect, then we feel better. And that's really the only way to feel better is when you, when you realize the perfection of your experience, um, you, the, the things that we consider good and the things that we consider bad, just realizing the perfection and that starts inside. In all of it, yeah, yeah, that was very much the conversation I was trying to have with my friend yesterday. Um, you know, just being okay with where you're at, you know, don't make it wrong. Um, a lot of her language was, I should be doing this, you know, I, I, I need to, get off my ass but you know but she's just got no energy and no um no focus and I just said that's okay it's, you know be kind to yourself you need to just be kind to yourself and it's really hard because we've been brought up in a completely different way to that haven't we absolutely uh, it's a little bit of a, a retra retraining and a and, and finding that new way but ultimately it's worth it yeah so what what does the future look like for you? Do you have any sort of other other goals? I don't particularly like that word, but you know what I mean. Any other plans? Any other um, ideas that you want to bring to fruition in terms of the healing or or anything else? Um, at this point, um, I'm just working with as many people as I can to help them connect with the heart center. Um, and so again, if you're listening to this, just connect with that meditation um, and then it'll help you stay in the loop. And then there's gonna be developments over time as well of um, how to connect with the heart more and to bring our essence to fruition in the world. Okay. So if people wanna know more about Catherine, where would they go? Sure, um, I have a website and um, I'll give you the link. And you can visit the website and um, and check it out. And if it resonates. Do you want to say the name? I will put it in the show notes, but do you want to say the name here? Sure. It's katherineuramd.com at this point in time. Yeah. Okay, cool. And um, is there any parting words, anything you'd like to say to the audience that you feel inspired to share? Yes. Think smell. If um, if you at all feel a calling or an inkling in your heart, it may feel like a light fluttering. It may feel like an innate knowing. It may look like a little light or some kind of image. Um, and if you feel that, um, allow it to grow and follow it because you will not only benefit your life but everyone else's and the future to come. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you so much. Um, it's been a pleasure to meet you. I loved the meditation and um, yeah, and I'll, I will be doing that again. And um, I, I wish you all the best in connecting with as many people as you can, because God knows the world needs it right now. Thank you.